So I guess my moral obligation today is to talk about judgment aggregation because it would be absurd if um, there were a goodbye workshop for Christian and nothing about judgment aggregation. After all, Christian is an important initiator of uh, this whole field. Without him, there would not exist any judgment aggregation here on earth. <laughs> now, in theory, not in practice, of course. Um, but I also have a second moral obligation, which is to prevent Christian from falling asleep. Uh, so I have to tell something that he doesn't already know. Uh, notice this is joint work with him. So uh, Christian, I will try that you don't fall asleep and I will incorporate something that hopefully uh, you will find a little bit new in part three of the talk and that will hopefully interest you. Okay. I don't have my camera on, unfortunately. I, I did a little trick with my mobile phone. Um, maybe you saw me um, a minute ago, but now I turned the mobile phone off and it's only my PC. Okay, please relax. It's the last talk before, of course, uh, Richard's uh, appraisal. Um, you're all aware of the difference between static and dynamic notions of rationality. Um, and throughout the different branches of rational choice theory, there is this distinction. Uh, preferences can be statically rational means transitive and so on. Um, uh, uh, beliefs, uh, probabilistic beliefs can be statically rational if they are, uh, are probabilistic and they're dynamically rational if they are updated in accordance with Bayes' rule. Uh, and also in binary judgment, uh, theory or binary belief theory, uh, there is a dynamic and a static element to it. Statically, we want beliefs to be logically consistent, deductively closed, perhaps even complete. Um, dynamically, we want them to be revised uh, in a plausible manner. Basically, when you learn the truth of a proposition, we want you afterwards to accept that proposition, to believe it, and to make appropriate changes to your other beliefs. Now, in aggregation theory, we look at collective rationality. So we want the group to be rational. And in judgment aggregation theory, there's a lot of work about, um, about whether an aggregation rule can produce a statically rational output, uh, consistent collective beliefs, deductively closed collective beliefs. Um, but there is a neglect of the dynamic aspect. So does the group agent actually rationally revise its judgments when information is learned? So that's the purpose of the paper to, to look at dynamically rational judgment aggregation. The classic paradox for static group rationality is the discursive dilemma. Uh, you all know it, uh, there are three propositions, for instance, P, if P then Q and Q, and every member of the group has a perfectly consistent judgment set over these three propositions, and the proposition-wise majority judgment set is logically inconsistent. That's static irrationality. Here is a dynamic paradox. We again assume the aggregation rule is majority voting, and what goes wrong is here, the way the majority revises its judgments. So look at two situations, before learning that P is true and after learning this. Before learning that P is true, the individuals have certain beliefs. Basically, no one believes P, and they have certain beliefs on the other two propositions. And the majority comes in such a way that the majority doesn't believe that P, it doesn't believe that if P, then Q, and it is, doesn't believe that Q. By the way, that's perfectly statically rational because you ca can consistently say no to all these three propositions. We assume that if then is not a material condition, but something more plausible. Now, P is learned to be true. Everyone revises its judgments rationally. They all accept P now. And if necessary, they also revise the, some other judgments to retain consistency. The new majority judgments are the group believes P, that's fine, that's perfectly fine. The group still doesn't believe if P then Q, and this group suddenly believes Q. 
that is not a rational revision of the group judgments. The group has correctly come to believe P, but it has also reversed its judgment on Q, and there was no need to do that, uh, because uh, if we assume that rationality of revision means minimal um, revision of your judgment, subject to accepting what you have learned and subject to staying rational or, or consistent, then there was no need to, to come to believe Q. Indeed, it would have been perfectly consistent to believe P, disbelieve if P then Q, and disbelieve Q. By the way, we could replace minimal revision by other notions of rational belief revision. So the paradox or the problem here doesn't come from assuming a particular revision rule. It works for many revision rules. So bottom line, majority um, judgment aggregation is dynamically and statically irrational. It creates a static problem and a dynamic problem. And the two paradoxes are really different because in the first paradox, the discursive dilemma, there's just a static irrationality. And in the second paradox, there's just a dynamic irrationality because both collective judgment sets, pre-revision pre and post-revision are statically rational. They are not logically inconsistent. Now, both paradoxes can be recast differently, namely not as a internal inconsistency of majority voting, but as a clash between two procedures, a divergence between two aggregation rules. The static paradox as can be recast as a divergence between premised and conclusion-based judgment aggregation, and the dynamic paradox can be recast as a conflict between ex ante and ex post aggregation. Let me explain what this means. Um, here, the static paradox. Um, if we use premise-based rule, that means we take a majority vote on each premise and the group derives its majority, its, its judgment on the conclusion by logical implication from its already formed judgments on the premises. Then we arrive at a yes on Q, whereas another aggregation rule, the conclusion-based rule, no judgments are being formed, no group judgments are formed on the premises, and we take a majority on the conclusion, and we arrive at the different group view on the conclusion. See, there are two procedures that lead to conflicting outcomes. Um, you can object to those two rules, uh, premise and conclusion-based, by saying that both make use a certain reference point a certain level at which to aggregate. The premises, premise-based aggregation uses the premises as the correct level of aggregation, the conclusion based the conclusion, but there is no absolute premise. There's always deeper premises. Premises can be seen con as conclusions of deeper premises and conclusions can be seen as premises for even later conclusions. So there is perhaps no absolute premise, no absolute conclusion, and therefore there's some ad hocness in both of these procedures. Here is the dynamic paradox again, and let's, let's contrast ex ante aggregation and ex post aggregation. So these are what I would call intertemporal aggregation rules because they lead to collective judgments at different times, at, at all times that are relevant. Here there are two relevant times before and after learning P. The ex ante rule only aggregates ex ante and then uses revision to form its exposed uh, judgments. So the exposed individual judgments are ignored by the ex-ante rule. Uh, only the ex-ante individual judgments are being aggregated and then the group revises. The exposed aggregation rule forms no ex-ante collective judgments. So there is just no aggregation, no group agent uh, at the, at the first stage, and then suddenly out of nothing, um, a group agent appears uh, by, ex, uh, by aggregating the exposed views of the individuals. And of course, those two um, rules disagree, ex ante and ex post. Again, we can object to both of these solutions, ex ante and ex post aggregation, because again, there is some reference point, there's some reference time of aggregation ch chosen by each of those rules, and there's some ad hocness in this choice because ex ante is exposed is also after uh, so every day is 
tomorrow from the perspective of, of another day and yesterday from the expect, uh, perspective of another day, there is no absolute reference point of aggregation, it seems. And since we live in football times, after the game is before the game. Uh, and uh, I don't know how Christian is going to resolve his dilemma on Tuesday, Germany and England are playing. Uh, I, you know, siding with England and notice that in the English team, Arsenal players are playing London and in the German team, Bayern Munich players are playing. That's the, your new affiliation, Munich. So this is going to create lots of tension in you, I suppose. Okay, today we are talking about dynamic rationality. So let's leave aside all the static business, the discursive dilemma, uh, premise and conclusion based regression. Let's look at the dynamic problem. And this second part of the talk, it's going to be short. I want to keep it short because I want to come to part three where I want to surprise Christian. Um, now, there's, an, of course, a move in JA theory from individual paradoxes to general impossibility theorems. Uh, and the discussed dilemma uh, can be turned in general impossibility theorems. There are many on the market. One of them, of course, an important one, the, the first one, if, if you like, by Christian and uh, Philip Pettit. Uh, and then one that parallels Arrow's theorem, and that was done by Christian and me. Uh, but in the dynamic side of the medal, we now derive, again, an impossibility theorem. We show that there exists no JA rule, which cr creates dynamically rational collective outputs. So we cannot create a dynamically rational group agent um, if we aggregate in, by any of the standard rules. Um, and to show this to you, I need to talk quickly through the JA framework. I'm going to be really informal and quick. Uh, we consider some individuals. We consider some propositions. Uh, propositions, depending on your states, can be sets of possible worlds, sentences, uh, or elements of the Boolean algebra. I don't know. Uh, some of you are philosophers. Some of you are perhaps economists. And uh, some are even perhaps mathemat mathematically inclined people. So you have different tastes. but uh, there is any, everything for every taste. Uh, the logic is very thin notion and uh, it has a bit of structure so that we can reasonably talk about inter-consistency of propositions and negation of propositions. Now, the agenda is those propositions which we care about on which we want collective judgments. And the agenda technically is just a finite subset of the set of all propositions, closed and a negation. So it's a, a union of disjoint pairs P, not P, and those pairs are called the issues. Here are some examples. Um, we have the agenda of our example. It contains the issue P or not P, if P then Q or not, if P then Q and Q or not Q, and then you yeah, have single issue agendas, etc. The preference agenda is also one of those agendas. Judgments are captured by those, the set of those propositions that the individual accepts. So a judgment set is a set of of accepted propositions. Um, and uh, if I was going to talk about static rationality, then I would, of course, focus on whether the judgment set is complete, consistent, deductively closed. But that is not the focus of today. An aggregation rule takes as input a profile of individual judgment sets and it returns a collective judgment set. Classic examples, majority rule, the group judgments, the group belief propositions are the majority believed propositions. More generally, the uniform quota rule, a uniform quota rule, ac under such a rule, the group accepts those propositions for which at least some number of people accept the proposition. And you can set the threshold higher or less high. You can set it exactly in the middle, then it's majority rule. Important new concept, revision. Uh, by a revision operator, we simply mean a function that takes as input an initial judgment set, a learned proposition, and it returns a revised, a post-information judgment set. And of course, you can, for instance, define distance-based revision operators and many others. Dynamic rationality is an axiom on the aggregation rule, and it says that the group judgment set is revised rationally. That means if you compare two profiles, J1 to JN, 
and the revised profile J1 given an in information, J2 given the information, so on. So in other words, if you consider a situation before learning P and a situation after P has learned, and if you then compare the two collective judgment sets, F of the first profile, F of the second profile, then F of the second profile has to be F of the first profile revised upon P. In other words, when an information is learned, then the group also learns it. Technically, that means there's a commutativity between aggregation and learning. We have our impossibility in two versions and an on anonymous version where we focus on quota rules, uh, on uniform quota rules. And we show that if the agenda is minimally interconnected, that means it's non-simple, the issues are not completely disconnected from one another, then no uniform quota rule with, with whatever threshold, except if the threshold is maximal, no such rule is dynamically rational with respect to any plausible revision operator. By plausible, I mean some standard restrictions. So how, whatever your theory of rational revision is, as soon as that theory is regular and, and, and rationality preserving, and then you cannot set the threshold for the acceptance of group beliefs in any way to make the group be a dynamically rational agent. That is pretty, pretty bad. And uh, we can take out anonymity from the theorem. So instead of looking at quota rules, which are anonymous by definition, we can look at any rule satisfying a bunch of conditions. And no such rule is dynamically rational. Each such rule creates a group agent that Cor incorrectly revises its, its beliefs as information comes in. Now, what do we do when we have an impossibility theorem? We, of course, relax some conditions and look at, at possibilities. And uh, it turns out to be really difficult because if we relax just one of the conditions, then we get possibilities, but they are pretty strange. Uh, if we relax many conditions at the same time, then there is a promising escape group, namely premise-based judgment aggregation works, is dynamically rational with respect to premise-based revision. Um, I'm not going to show you the result, but the essence is that if we have a particular, if you have, if you have a distinction in the agenda between premise propositions and conclusion propositions, and if the individuals revise, if, if rational revision goes from premises to conclusion, that means you first revise on the premises and then you draw the conclusion for the conclusions, then with respect to that premise-based revision operation, uh, you can find a premise-based aggregation rule and that's precisely premise-based judgment aggregation. And now, Christian, wake up. Um, I think there's a need for inter temporal judgment aggregation theory. So what's the motivation? The motivation is that a group agent has an existence that extends over time. The LSE is of, of course, or hopefully a group agent, but it's one group agent that lasts over time and it's not a different one in 2019 and 2020. Of course, the LSE group agent will change dramatically when Christian is leaving the LSE. Um, and we want the group agent to be rational, uh, meaning statically rational and dynamically rational. So this suggests we must aggregate the whole stream of individual judgments as they change over time into a stream of group judgments. And that stream of group judgments, it represents the group agent over time. Now, a critic might say, is that really needed? Uh, can we not reduce the study of a group agent over time to standard judgment aggregation theory, which considers just one moment in time? We can if we accept a principle which I would call instantaneous supervenience. And that principle says that the group agent's judgment at any given time supervene on the current individual judgments. So what the LSE believes in 2021 is a function of the LSE members believes in 2021 and no, not of any 
future or past uh, member judgments. If we believe that, then a intertemporal judgment negation function is actually reducible to a instantaneous aggregation function. But as a matter of fact, the two rules that I showed to you earlier, the ex ante aggregation rule and the ex post aggregation rule, are two intertemporal JA rules which violate that principle. Um, for instance, the ex ante rule makes tomorrow's LSE judgments dependent on today's LSE member judgments. So therefore, there seems to be a possibility to violate that principle and therefore a need to do judgment negation in an intertemporal or dynamic way. By the way, we can of course go to a more complete picture of the rational agent, which is not just JA, but uh, attitude aggregation more generally. Uh, the LSE not just has, uh, has not just judgments, beliefs, but also intentions, uh, desires. Uh, I, and so uh, if we want to aggregate the group member attitudes, beliefs, desires, intentions to into group belief, desires, intentions, then this is a more general uh, aggregation problem, which it, which also needs to be inter done intertemporally, I suppose, and not just statically. So here it is how it could look like. What would the primitives of, su of such an intertemporal version of the JA model be? We have individuals, as usual. We have an agenda, as usual. And then we have additionally a non-empty set of time points. Um, for instance, just two times ex ante ex post or a finite number of time points, or an infinite number of time points, or perhaps even we include negative time points, meaning there is no, no birth. The group agent is never born and never dies. And given these slightly increased premises, or excuse me, um, primitives, we can have derived notions. A judgment set of, as usual is a set of accepted propositions then an instantaneous or static aggregation rule is, is what we normally call an aggregation rule. It takes a profile of current judgments and returns a current group judgment set. And then a judgment stream that's new is a stream of judgment sets over time. It describes how the agent in question, be it an individual or the group, how it thinks across time and how those judgments change over time. And an in intertemporal or dynamic judgment profile is a description of what all the group members believe at all the times. So it's a list of judgment streams. And an intertemporal aggregation rule uh, maps such uh, intertemporal profiles into a collective judgment stream. So it says what the LSE, what the group agent believes over time as a function of what the individuals believe over time. Here are some examples. Of course, we start with majority rule. At any point of time, the current majority judgments define the current group judgments. So here, at any point of time, we look only at what the individuals currently believe and take the majority. The ex ante rule could be defined as follows. So suppose time is, there are only finitely many time points or perhaps infinitely many, but there is a, start, a starting time, time zero. And then we need a, a revision operator, uh, which says how judgment sets are being revised when information is learned. We can then also, that the operator also induces a way to revise judgments as you learn not just one proposition, but a set of propositions. It's, there's a natural way to define it. And now the ex ante rule is defined as follows. At time zero, the collective judgment set is just the majority judgment set. The, it contains the, the initial majority beliefs of the individuals. And from then on, the collective judgment uh, set never looks at how individuals have changed their judgments. It only revises. Um, consecutively uh, its judgments by applying the revision rule. So it looks what information has currently been learned. So what kind of set of propositions have the group members currently learned 
And then it takes yesterday's group judgments and revises those group measures in light of the currently learned propositions. So that's the ex ante rule. It aggregates just ex ante and from then on and revises, 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 revises. The ex post rule does the opposite. Suppose there's a final time. At any moment before the final time, no collective groups judgments are being formed at all. So one might say there is no collective agent before the end. And at the very end, suddenly, we take a majority vote and we look only at what people in the group finally believed. So that's the dual, if you like, of the ex-ante rule. Now, I'm not going to present it in theorem here, but uh, some ideas of uh, towards axiomatic properties. So instantaneous supervenience, the principle I, I listed earlier, would say that at any moment of time, the current group judgments are determined solely by the individual group judgments. So formally speaking, there is a standard JA rule, the instantaneous judgment negation rule, such that for any in, in the temporal profile and for any time, the current group judgments are a function of the current individual judgments. And that's, of course, satisfied by majority rule and it's violated by ex ante and ex post aggregation. Uh, more generally, temporal independence would say that um, the current, at any time, the current group judgments depend only in, on individual judgments, but it may also define on the time moment. So here, the F star function can have an index, index T. So that's suddenly satisfied by the exposed rule. Um, but still not by the ex-ante rule. And then even more generally, independence of the future would say something very plausible. The LSE's judgment at any time don't depend on the LSE members' future judgments. So they can depend on the LSE members' past judgments, but not on the and present judgments, but not on the future judgments. And that's now satisfied uh, also by the ex-ante rule. And for such an intertemporal JA rule, one can then state the axiom of dynamic rationality. And that axiom says that, I mean, I am sure many of you will guess what the axiom says. Take any time point and assume that at that time point, the group members have learned some proposition. Then we want the current group judgment set to be the yesterday's group judgment set conditional on that proposition that has been learned. And there's also a, a version of that axiom that uses not that just learning one proposition but a set of propositions. And uh, not surprisingly, the ex ante rule satisfies that axiom. So that's nice. Uh, whereas majority rule, of course, violates it completely. And uh, by our theorem that I showed you earlier, one can easily see that almost no intertemporal JA rule satisfies uh, dynamic rationality. And possibly there is a characterization theorem of around the corner which says something like a J, an intertemporal JA rule is dynamically rational if and only if is it, it is the ex ante rule, um, or more precisely, a slight general, generalization of it, which allows the initial collective judgments to be not the majority judgments, but any function of the individual profile. I think this is all I wanted to say. And, uh, but let me conclude by saying that it was great and is great uh, to work with Christian on JA, and uh, that this was also a very nice uh, workshop. So thank you very much to the uh, organizers. And uh, it is also nice to see um, that the breadth of Christian's work is reflected in this workshop because we have seen papers of very, very different kinds.